I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to, but I'm obligated to let you guys go. Would you like to give a social distance high five to Chris Spieler? I'll bring him in real quick because before you guys take off. Do it. You guys want to say hi to Chris? Yeah. Oh, yeah, on, absolutely. Chris. All right. Dan takes, takes a couple seconds here, but Chris is now entering the room. And uh, you guys get a, get a good look at the man recovering. Look at that. Chris Hey. Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. We're walking down memory lane, buddy. So we thought we would bring you in before these guys left, just at least to say a quick hello and high five. Yeah, virtual high fives these days. <clears throat> right, how's it been you going? Sounded, you, you sounded great, great. man. Yeah. Great. The fact that you're not wearing your legend shirt right now is yeah, right. Like you are the ultimate legend. You, <laughs> you now beat COVID. Like good. <laughs> we're on the way out. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Jeez. <clears throat> Better now. Hey, We're better better than, you. than you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Hey. All right. Glad you're feeling it's... better, though. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick these guys out, Chris. Uh, they just want to say hey and uh, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, stick uh, tune in to the YouTube channel and uh, listen to Chris's story. It's pretty fantastic from uh, what I heard today. Chris, get better, brother. Yeah, everybody, get better. better, man. See you, brother. Right. Let's see. You. See you guys. See you guys. Bye. Take care. Chris Spieler, buddy. Yeah. How are you, my friend? I mean, I, I, I think that the world already knows. I've um, kind of given him a, <laughs> I've teed him up, but I listened to your Instagram live today. Uh, it was what an amazing story that you've got to share. And, and there were some really, really what I think are important messages in there. So um, I want to catch up and I mean, the shoot the last time I saw I you, who knows, um, or even got to have a good long chat with you. But I think the important stuff is um, to tell people your most recent experience and we'll kind of dig in on, on what you took away from it. Sure. I, I mean, do you want me to just kind of give you the goods on how it started or what, what happened? Well, or? I think, I think just tell, you know, people are just tuning in right now. Um, yeah. Tell them what happened. Um, yeah. So I guess in, in short, you know, I started experiencing, uh, like a light cough. This is after we closed the gym, you know, praise God. It was after that. We didn't have to worry about uh, anybody else being at risk, but we had closed the gym and about a few days later, I got the dry cough thing and it really wasn't a big deal, but then started experiencing shortness of breath. Um, <clears throat> had no exposure to anybody that had COVID to my knowledge. So, um, I really have no idea where I would have gotten it from, but um, in that time frame, was basically hanging out with the family, but trying to have some distance, you know, not snuggling with the kids at night, not snuggling on the couch, try to have some distance. And, and, and um, do me a favor, because I yeah. think that people are either people one of two places. Maybe they're watching from internationally and they had a completely different experience, and, and maybe they've been watching from China. And yeah. Theoretically, their curve is flattened, or maybe they're watching from one of the states that still doesn't even have social distancing protocols in place. Yeah. So at this place, where was your head? Were you like, ah, it doesn't matter if I get COVID or, and, and not in a judgmental way. Yeah. But, you know, some people are like, I'm, it, you know, tell me where your, your head was at. Um, you know, I, I was pretty, pretty calm. Uh, the, the shortness of breath thing is what really started to create the concern. Um, it wasn't crazy, but it was enough to be concerning. And I ended up going into get a test. Uh, they have like this hotline through my family doctor, which kind of walked through that system and process and was able to go get a test. And it took me a couple of days to hear back um, just because that's where the testing is right now. And, and two days later that I was positive. So pretty much right away went downstairs and did the self quarantine thing, wiping kids upstairs. And at that point, um, during that little window is probably when I started feeling some of the worst with the shortness of breath and never had a fever. I never had uh, any body aches. It was all this cough, fatigue, and shortness of breath. And then uh, five days later, my wife, Sarah, started showing symptoms. Uh, so she had been upstairs with the kids. She and the kids got tested. Her test came back positive. And before we found that out, we talked to the health department and she came downstairs. I went upstairs to try to take care of the kids. Uh, so there's just like a huge dynamic with a family of four and little kids and they're being homeschooled. Wow. And 
I mean, you name it, you know, so it's, it was yeah, and really I think, hard. I think that, excuse me, when I heard you speaking earlier, something that jumped out is because we can all associate with this, the information changes, not just daily, but almost hourly. And so for someone who, who was actually, you know, um, diagnosed as having the virus, what was that like? Not, I mean, getting different answers from different yeah. people at different times. That was that. That was probably the hardest part as a family because I couldn't just be like, oh, I'll stay at home and, you know, not be around anyone. I'll just whatever. Um, so when I got tested, I had actually started to feel better when I went to get tested. I was like, oh, maybe I'm coming out of something. Got tested, started to feel worse. Um, and then when we found out, I was kind of in this limbo climbing out of it, but was still downstairs for five days. But at the time, that was 17 for 14 days. And then a day later it was well seven days from the onset of symptoms and you shouldn't have a fever for 72 hours which i never had and you should be feeling better so they were kind of using that as a guideline which is why i went upstairs to take care of the kids because then my wife sarah started feeling bad and she stares but then kids started showing some symptoms and even though their test came up negative the health department said hey you got to treat them as they're positive but how do you separate a 10 and an eight year old like do you keep them in their own rooms you've got to try to i i oh yeah so, well, and speaking <laughs> to that as a parent too whose kids or who or someone who has not been we're practicing social distancing yeah but i let the kids go on bike rides and it's this weird kind of mentality of like are they going to police them like do i need to fly my drone over the top of them and like <laughs> it's, so it's very it's a very difficult situation as an adult to wrap your head around much less my kids, as you know, are the exact same age as your yep. uh, eight and a ten year old, and it's a really difficult thing to to discuss and to explain, like the gravity of the situation. Make sure that they really get it and they understand how serious you are. Without totally. message earlier that really resonated with me was to not live in fear, but don't be naive. Yeah, um, which I want to hear you speak to, but but especially for a kid, man, that's a very hard line to walk and to explain. Oh, a hundred percent, and that's probably was the most difficult thing with that situation is how do I handle this with kids while I'm upstairs trying to recover, trying to make sure that they're apart because one of them was showing symptoms, the other wasn't, but do they have it? And, and we don't want to panic, but checking to make sure their temperature is good. And, and then they're talk of, well, can I get it again? It could it be worse or, or can I, but they've got to have a parent around. So it was, um, yeah, it was really challenging for sure. Um, and and I'm really curious to hear to hear you talk about this. Um, obviously, your public personality and, and people look up to you, and you're um, you know fantastic coach, and and uh, and people you know follow your training, and, and so you're you're out there all the time. But you're not obligated to share this. Like, what? Why was it important for you to kind of tell people about this, share it, and and you know let them kind of interact with you about it? Yeah, it's a good question. I I waited for three weeks, sort of for. I guess on purpose. One, I didn't want to freak anybody out at the gym locally. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I had done kind of the due diligence there and, and I, I told anybody that needed to and thankfully no one was at risk. And then because there's so much uncertainty around the virus, what's crazy is like my symptoms were different than Sarah's and hers are different than other people that we know that were hospitalized. I have friends that have been in the hospital on ventilators. I have other people that have um, had really mild symptoms, you know? So there's such this broad scope of this that I wanted to at least be kind of climbing out of the hole a little bit. But I actually <clears throat> talked to Sherwood a couple of days ago and he's a good friend of mine. And um, I let him know and he's like, oh my God, gosh, like I, I know has it. And he was cool. He said, I, I know there's a lot of like pros and cons. You could probably fill them up but he said, if you did tell people publicly, it might just be an eye opener that even people that have a pretty stout level of fitness, you're not immune to this thing and take it seriously. And it's not a cold. It's not just this like, oh, healthy people are gonna be immune to it or bomb proof. It is no joke. It's um, not something to be walking around in fear about, but it is, um, it's a, it's a serious thing. People got to do their part to make sure that they're taking care of themselves and the, and the people around them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I love the message. Um, 